Oh, hey there. Didn't notice you. I was just over here applying for the new BotPress Bot Ambassador program, and filling out this form just suddenly opened up a chatbot. How did that happen? We're back with another tutorial about how we can use triggers to interact and do cool things with your website. And this isn't actually the BotPress Bot Ambassador program application, but it's another tutorial showing you how we can take information from a form and pass it to a hidden chatbot and then use that information right there in the chat. So let's jump on in. I say a hidden chatbot because, well, this website has no chatbot button. There's nothing down here in the corner. It's not embedded anywhere. Instead, we use the submit application button as a trigger to show and then load the chatbot. And that happens using some code. But before we get there, let's jump into our bot and see what's going on there. This bot is very simple. It's the same uh, modified grumpy bot that has been used in the other triggers tutorials. And if you want a bit more information on that, I recommend you check out the first video. However, to that, we've added a new trigger. Now this isn't the same kind of trigger we've been using in other tutorials. That one is the conversation started trigger. We're not using this one because we want to pass information from the website into the chatbot. And to do that, we have to send a payload, not an event. And it's some distinction behind the scenes, but essentially that means the conversation started trigger listens for an event and the custom trigger listens for a payload. Inside that payload, that's where we pass that information. So after we create the trigger, we're going to run a little bit of code, and I mean just a few lines of code, to take the information from our triggers payload and save them to variables in the workflow. Now here, I'm not saving them to any workflow variables. I'm just creating a message with workflow.response, and then I'm saying that message in a capture card here. But if we wanted to save them to workflow variables, that's just as easy as doing something like workflow.email equals email. Now we have it saved as a workflow variable. While this is all the code in the bot, our website does need a lot more code. So let's dive in and go through that step by step. The first thing that we do is embed our chatbot. Now this code comes from the configurable option in the admin panel. It's copy pasted exactly with one small addition. That is this parameter here, hide widget. That's what's responsible for making sure that there's no chat icon in the bottom corner and that the bot only shows itself when we click on that submit button. Then we define some global variables that will be used in our functions. And we have two functions, one function to show the bot and another function that sends a trigger with a payload. That's this line down here, bot press web chat dot send payload of type trigger with a payload of info. And info is just this parameter passed to the function. The next section is an event listener on the submit button. That is this button down here. When this button is clicked, all of this code will run. And this is the main way to start running all of this code. When this happens, we take the information from the form. We add the position of bot ambassador, just because we want to add some extra flair and we package all of this up and save it back to this global variable. Finally, once we have the information, we show the bot and we set our global submitted variable to be true. The last part is our event listener for the web widget itself. And this listens for two events. Lifecycle loaded means that the web widget has downloaded all the information and data that it needs to be shown. And lifecycle.ready means that the web widget has shown itself and is ready for interaction. When the lifecycle loaded event comes up, we say that bot loaded is true. And when it's ready, we say that bot ready is true. But then we listen for submitted. And this is the thing that keeps the bot from popping up immediately on the website and only pops up after this submitted event listener has run its course. So just a quick timeline of events that happens. When the website loads, our web widget loads, 
and our bot.loaded variable is set to true. Then when we submit the application by clicking this button, we take the details from the form and we show the bot. This triggers lifecycle.ready. And when that happens, we make sure that the bot is loaded, it's ready, and the form is submitted. And only when all three of those have happened, do we send the information to the bot using our send form info. A really cool thing, we have our form details defined in our website right here. And if we look at our bot's logs, we can see that when an event comes in, it's exactly the same. We've got our name, email, LinkedIn, message, position right here. Same as in our website, name, email, LinkedIn, message, position right there. So this is the code that is needed, and the order is very important here because we don't want to show the chatbot before the form has been finished or try to show the chatbot before everything has been loaded. It's kind of a careful dance, but with this code, we're able to navigate that very easily. The great news is that you don't need to write this yourself. This code will be available as well as this bot and the whole website in our Discord. If you're not already on our Discord, it's a great place to be. There's tons of experts like me and other people hanging out there to help you with your bot, answer questions, provide feedback, and just generally be cool people to hang out with. So I highly recommend you stop in our Discord and hang out. If you don't want to hang out and just want to download the bots, there will be links in the description for that as well. And as always, happy bot building.